4,000 subscribers? Can you tell I'm excited? Well, what better way to thank you for making this channel what it is than with an animal tour? I will reveal some creatures that you probably haven't seen on this channel and some creatures that I know you haven't seen on this channel. But first, I have a confession to make. I can't pick. I'm not just a fish keeper or just a reptile enthusiast. I, I like everything. And so today I'm going to give you a sampling of many different types of creatures. I can't promise that you'll see everything that I own, but you will get a good idea of what Aquarimax is all about. First, I'll introduce you to my one and only mammalian pet. This is Cosmo. We've had him since 2009. He was originally a feral kitten born under my parents' deck. And to make a long story short, we eventually adopted him. And his hobbies include waking us up at 5 a.m. to let us know he's hungry, sitting in laps and purring, and jumping at people's ankles with no warning. Cosmo really is a nice cat if he wants to be. This next portion of the video is for the birds. This is my budgie Twilly. Uh, his, full, his full name is William Bali Zacharias Raptor and Wilson, but we just call him Twilly. So, um, he likes to be weird and ram into walls. He also likes to bob his head up and down and raise up his crest on his head. Um, he also likes to eat and gets mad at you if you try to take him off his seeds while he's eating. And he, as seeing as he's a bird, he also likes to groom himself a lot. And he, he can talk, but he's camera shy. But we recorded a, a soundbite of him talking, and so we'll play that. Thank you, Gwen, and I can just show everybody. He, Gwen is his favorite person, but he's really friendly and likes everybody. But Gwen is the only one that's allowed to pet his head, for example. Here are some of our 10 chickens. They live in a very large outdoor run that borders our garden. And there's their coop out there in the background. Our chickens' hobbies include laying lovely brown eggs, this chicken here, our black copper marins in the background, lays lovely dark brown eggs like this one. They also enjoy eating extra produce from our garden and chasing grasshoppers. This next segment is brought to you by Reptiles. This is my daughter's leopard gecko, Pago. She seems to be getting a real kick out of the new bioactive vivarium we made for her. She really enjoys crunching crickets and subterranean construction. My wife's gecko Tiki is probably the most laid-back gecko that we have. Her hobbies include licking her eyes, whatever else she can touch, and jumping against the front glass when she wants to be let out. Tiki lives in a bioactive vivarium that is 18 by 18 inches wide and 24 inches tall that is much in need of a trim from all that creeping fig that grows incessantly. And here is the offspring of Tiki, Tiki 2, once called Tiny Tiki 2, but not so tiny anymore. Tiki 2 has grown quite a bit in the past few months. It's not quite a year old yet. We are not sure uh, whether Tiki 2 is a male or a female, but there's some indication based on uh, some development in the tail region that Tiki 2 is a male. And if that is the case, it's quite possible that uh, Tiki, the mother, actually is also the father having fertilized Tiki 2 with uh, a polar body. And you can go and check our last video on Tiki 2 to find out more about that. We are still awaiting the results of the genetic analysis of their shed skins to confirm that this is a case of parthenogenesis. But Tiki 2 has been doing quite well. The only problem is the development of the left eye, which as you can see, uh, is not doing much, it's continuing to stay small. But hopefully, if we can maneuver Tiki 2 into position, you can see why we suspect that Tiki 2 is probably a male. T2 
Tiki 2's main hobby seems to be eating voraciously. This is a gecko I don't believe you've seen yet. This is Jake, a uh, super Dalmatian with both black and red spots. He is a male and his hobby is mainly leaping off into space at unpredictable moments. He's not quite as laid back as uh, Tiki is. And though he is a male and we've had him for quite some time, he has never so much as been in a room unsupervised with uh, Tiki at any time. So we're quite confident he is not the father of Tiki too. Here are some representatives of my colony of morning geckos. I currently have one adult, four that are about to mature, and this one that hatched just four days ago. It's incredible how tiny they are. I never really get over it. These geckos are notable because they reproduce without males. That is the normal mode of reproduction for this species. Males are extremely rare and in any case don't appear to be fertile. They just basically produce clones of themselves. Right now I have five eggs uh, that are waiting to hatch. Some should hatch any day now and some will be a couple of months. But uh, morning geckos tend to enjoy chirping at night, waving their tails at each other, engaging in minor territorial spats, and just hanging around. Now let's jump into the amphibians. Here is one of my three bumblebee dart frogs. This is the male. Now if I had to say that these frogs shared a hobby, it would be eating fruit flies. They, they really, really like eating. But the male also enjoys singing. Both the males and the females occasionally like to scale vertical walls of glass. This is my axolotl Winry. She likes to eat from the target stick and snap at the air bubbles coming from her sponge filter. Let's move on to the fish now, don't you think? Pondy and Rory, our two goldfish, enjoy unsynchronized swimming and Pondy is one of my few pets to have speaking roles in my YouTube videos. My Julitochromus marlieri are kind of introverted fish, but they enjoy mosquito sushi and the territorial challenges of living with multis. My gold barbs are a pretty cohesive group. They can generally be found pretty close together, and their hobbies include eating and eating. There's always something interesting going on in the multi tank. My multi's hobbies include living in shells, dumping sand out of shells, dumping sand on someone else's shells, and fighting over shells. And well, obviously, my opaiula or Hawaiian red shrimp are not fish. I put them in this section on the grounds that they are aquatic pets. I've had these amazingly easy pets since about 2004 or 2005, and uh, I guess you could say that their hobby is nibbling incessantly looking for food, and when I drop a food pellet in, there's a veritable feeding frenzy. And now for some creatures that you probably haven't seen on this channel. If you really want to skip the invertebrates, you can do so. There's a link in the item description, but hopefully you'll stick around. Now, I gotta explain something. Have you ever seen the comic strip Calvin and Hobbes? Well, there's one comic where Calvin the little boy and his friend the tiger are walking along a creek and the tiger asks Calvin the boy, what are you doing? And he says that he's looking for frogs. And the tiger asks him why. And he says, and I quote, I must obey the inscrutable exhortations of my soul. My mandate also includes weird bugs, unquote. And that's kind of sums it up. I like everything, including weird bugs. So let's take a look at some of them. Okay, let me backtrack here. I, I know these aren't particularly weird, but they are rather unique. And I do consider some of my more brightly colored and interestingly patterned isopods pets rather than live foods. I'm not really including live foods in this video. But uh, I do enjoy the isopods and I have some with rather interesting colors like these Spanish orange isopods. And I have a bit of interesting news. Some time ago, about two years ago, I crossed some of these Spanish orange isopods with some of these Dalmatian isopods, which they're actually the same species, they're just color morphs. And this is the first individual that represents both traits. It is an orange Dalmatian. And isopods have a very utilitarian hobby, if you can call it that. They clean up after other organisms, which is part of the reason that I keep 15 different types of isopods. And this 
is an, a millipede, a giant African black millipede to be exact. Um, this species is one of the larger ones. It, doesn't, it can get to be about nine inches long, so this one has some growing to do. One good way to tell a millipede from a centipede is that a millipede has two legs on most of its body segments on each side, whereas a centipede only has one leg per body segment on each side. My millipede's hobbies include nibbling on dead leaves and taking very, very, very long walks. This little guy is a baby vinegaroon. Vinegaroons are named for a protective fluid that smells just like vinegar that they can spray at enemies. Um, other than that, they're pretty harmless, and they're also known as whip scorpions for the long whip-like structure on their tail, but they can't sting. And this guy really likes to eat crickets and is quite an excavator, uh, kind of like the arachnid version of a bulldozer. This little creature, although it looks pretty scary, is actually quite harmless, and it's called the tailless whip scorpion. This one's from Tanzania, and I raised it from a tiny baby. They eat crickets and other insects, and um, this one likes to spend most of its time hanging upside down on a vertical surface. Well, thank you for joining me for my 4,000 subscriber animal tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's a creature that you would like to see more of in future videos or a creature you would like to see less of, please let me know in the comments. And I'll see you next week for another Aquarimax video. Oh, you're still here. I'll tell you a secret. I like to stay till the end too.